no madre! It's a man on her again! A one-man show! Veins left, veins right, ball tied to his feet. What a man! The English have no answers! The little genius, little rubber legs, el jefe! They fall at his feet like pilgrims. Better tell God to move along! And it's still Maradona. Still Maradona! Not again, surely! Into the box! Sells another dummy! Onto his left foot! And it's all I say it isn't! No shot at God! Go! <laughs> the tsunami erupts across South America as young and old scramble to embrace. Blizzards of ticker tape engulf Mexico City. Buenos Aires erupts in a symphony of car hooters. In Lima, a man is electrocuted while kissing his television set. <laughs> Time stands still at 3.27 p.m. on the sun-drenched continent as their golden one scores the greatest of all World Cup goals. Everywhere you look, delirium and mayhem. Everywhere, that is, except Australia. A remote jungle town north in northern Bolivia where, in the heat of day, rows of Indian faces stare forlornly at the interface. It is the only television in 50 miles, and the phone line has been down for months. The only man with the technical know-how to solve this problem is Lucho, the mayor. But the villagers know he must never be disturbed from his afternoon siesta, the time reserved for addressing the most pressing needs of his female constituents. But this is, after all, the World Cup. So under the withering sun, a long procession makes its way toward the mayor's gate of the bird. They are not in luck. Two burly guards hold the hordes at bay. Those that attempt to scale the high walls are plucked down, but not before glimpsing the chubby white flesh of the mayor cavorting inside his tropical garden. There is nothing the crowd can do but wait out the afternoon sun with only jars of cane liquor to temper the mounting frustration. Finally, with dust settling in, Mayor Lucho emerges with his brigantine hair, silver chains, and Guayabera shirt. He waves to his subject and flashes that smile that has a men averting their eyes in fear of temporary blindness. Dozens follow as he strolls off towards the municipal hall to carry out once more the expert maintenance for which only he is qualified. Whispers of excitement grow once more as Lucio regards the television with the exacting gaze of a surgeon. He waits until the room is bathed in silence and with a single heavy blow jumps the monitor back into life. Diagonal lines swim across the screens. The Indians look on entranced. Lucio repeats the dose. Miraculously, out of the flickering chaos, the unmistakable figure of Maradona slowly emerges, kissing the sun on his shirt. Seeing the unrestrained joy of the toothless villagers, Lucho unfurls another meteoric uh, smile. Some say Lucho became mayor due to his handsome intelligence, or the handsome intelligence he showed as a boy working on the docks. No one knows the full story. When the supplies arrived by boat each month from up the river, the long, young Lucho would make sure to inter intercept one pivotal package, the town's provision of toothpaste. Early on, he recognised an essential truth of life, namely, toothpaste equals prestige. <laughs> Rather than share, he used to use the gel for his own furtive agenda, polishing his molars up to 100 times each per day. Lucho's teeth were soon revered throughout the mun municipality of Australia. No moon was needed to see them at night. And of course, his poor contemporaries knew nothing of such dental pride. Teeth lay just about everywhere you could care to mention, except in people's mouths. But no one suspected Lucho's teeth. They liked him, they liked his smile, and so he became mayor. Now the revelation of Argentina's quarter-final victory has awoken the town from its stupor. In the balmy jungle night, motorbikes hurtle up and down the street and revelers stagger out of canteens. A handful of men are boy to relive their own glory days there out in the dusty square of the town plaza. They have a ball and two teams, but at first it is simply too dark to play. Lucho, however, has another extraordinary brainwave and, and instructs 20 motorcyclists to train their lights upon the pitch. As the whole town gathers to watch, Lucho ins insists on joining in. He nominates himself as goalkeeper, where his girth ensures the goal is well protected. Even so, 
Few would risk, would dare risk the ignominy of scoring against such a man. The game begins. In spite of the eliminations, the effect of the cane licker upon the players is overwhelming, and for a long time neither goal line is threatened. In centre field, all you can see is graceless hacking of bits and dust. Suddenly, Mucho's attention is drawn to the spot behind his goal, where village beauty Manuela Canela appears in licking an ice cream and wearing a black slip that makes both men and women frown. She walks with an equine swing. You can see the tendons flitter up her thighs. Lucho loses all interest in the football. He rests his head dreamily on the crossbar and awaits the girl. Diablo, he cries. Do you know how very nicely you eat that ice cream? Lucho, she reacts in astonishment, her chuck eyes flopping into the sand. Lucho, familiar with the disarming response he can command with just a quick flash of teeth, now unleashes a smile so bright and brilliant even the goalposts lose their gloss. She shouts again, averting her eyes as if unable to withstand the sheer radiance of it all. But it is not what Lucho thinks. Arcing high up in the sky and plunging with deathly precision is a weighty leather ball thumped from far away on the opposing goal line. After a seemingly endless orbit, through the darkness the ball comes plummeting down to crunch Lucho's head, well, his teeth, against the crossbar. The ricochet is profound. There is no time for him to react. The village descends into shocked silence. The motorcycle beams are switched off out of respect. Bewildered, Lucho scours the ground for his teeth, only to discover shards of white opal glittering in the moonlight. Slowly he lifts his head up to face Manuela Canela to gauge the true extent of his misfortune and realizes the game is over.